Thinking about getting a hardware wallet? Feeling a little intimidated by the process? Don't be. Today we're going to go through everything from start to finish so that you can securely store your cryptocurrency. Welcome back to Woodland Pools, your place for the latest Cardano news, tutorials, and the information you need to grow your investment with confidence. Today, we're going to take a look at setting up a Ledger Nano X from scratch. We'll cover everything from where you order one online, what it looks like when it arrives, and then once it gets here, how you set it up. We'll do the whole thing together, we'll get it set up, and once it is, we'll install a couple of apps on there, one of them being Cardano, and we'll just go through the whole thing together. It's really straightforward. Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so we've come here to ledger.com. Make sure that where you're at is exactly www.ledger.com, okay? I personally would recommend, don't even like Google search it, just type it straight into your bar. And this is the reason why. Unfortunately, as technology progresses, so does the level of sophistication of these different hacking and uh, social engineering and, and phishing techniques. And so it gets to the extent that there's actually, you'll see, uh, there will be spoof sites set up that look exactly like, sometimes indistinguishable from, the real site you're trying to go to. Um, and, and they'll actually just be a fake site, and they'll either take your money, or worse, they may take your, your, uh, your private keys or, or passphrases and things and, and try and steal your crypto. So make sure that you're going to ledger.com. So once we're here, okay, so now we know we're at the right place, we know we're safe here, we can look at some of the products that they have. So uh, we've got the Nano X, the Nano S, we can go to compare here to see what some of the differences are. Here they are kind of side by side. Um, so the Nano X is what we're gonna be looking at today. The Nano S is very similar, it's a little bit smaller. Personally, I like the additional real estate a little bit. Um, they usually also have different sales going on. Right now when this is being filmed, it's just before Valentine's Day, so it looks like they've got some Valentine's specials going on. I'd recommend uh, to, to, to look out to see what specials might be going on. But we're going to go ahead and look at the Nano X, okay? So here's the Ledger Nano X. They have videos on it. You can see how it's used. Cool little graphics on, on sort of how it's put together. We'll see it has these two buttons here. Okay, so we say that we want to buy one. Where did that go? Did you guys see it? Here we go. So we just add it to cart, put in your information, buy it, and then it's sent to you. That's all there is to it. Look at this. It looks like it'll ship in two weeks right now. So make sure that you double check um, if it's in stock or not when you're ordering it. But that's it, you go to ledger.com, order the thing, and it comes straight to you. Once again, I highly recommend that you buy this directly from ledger.com and not from a third party site, not even through Amazon or anything like that. Get it directly from them. The whole reason that we're doing this, right, is that we wanna make sure that we have a high level of security and that we are the ones that are holding uh, the private keys to our coins and that nobody between when it was manufactured and when it got to us, had a chance to do anything in between there. So order it directly from them, make sure that you're safe about it. And just like that, through the magic of editing, our Nano Ledger has already arrived. So um, really nice packaging here, as I just showed you there. Uh, nice sort of like embossed uh, box. Uh, inside, got a little welcome booklet. Um, just your standard sort of, you know, paperwork and stuff. Um, some nice little stickers. If you're a fan of, of your ledger and you're happy with how it works out for you, you can put it on your laptop or something. Okay, so, uh, so here's the thing. Inside of here, we're gonna have these sheets where we write our recovery phrase. Okay, we're gonna come back to those in a second. But first things first, let's go ahead and take a look at our ledger. So here it is. Can you see that? There we go. Let me, let me do on. There you go. It's kind of hard to see with the metal on metal, but it does say ledger, I promise. Okay, so we're gonna open this thing up. It's not gonna really do anything right now, but what you're gonna wanna do is take the uh, USB cable that it provides, take the USB-C, plug it in, and let's go ahead and plug the other side into our laptop. And then right then it immediately lights up. So it says ledger, it says welcome to the Nano X, press the right button to continue. So this will be your right when you're holding it. So I'm gonna press that. And then the first thing it tells me to do is go to ledger.com slash start, okay? Uh, and so we're gonna go to ledger.com slash start and then when we're there, we're gonna press the right button again, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we are on ledger.com slash start, okay? 
getting started. So again, I just want to point out, like, look at just how nice and easy this whole process is, right? Like, again, we're worried about maybe some new technology here. We haven't used it before, kind of a little bit anxious, but look at how nice this whole thing is, right? So we just go, the, the device holds right where to go. We go straight to there. There's no guessing. So here we are. Get started. Just receive your device. Follow these steps. All right. Uh, get Ledger Live to start setting up. All right, so we're gonna download Ledger Live. So Ledger Live is how we're going to maintain and keep our Ledger Nano X up to date. It's how we're going to kick off its different firmware updates. We'll also be able to install different apps onto the Ledger. These apps are the actual software on the Ledger that allows it to sign transactions as you for different kinds of cryptocurrencies. So you'll use the device, it'll sign those transactions, but Ledger Live is how you'll have the UI interface on how you actually manage those transactions. Many cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, a whole bunch of them already have Ledger Live support. Cardano is slightly different in that we're gonna to need to use a third party UI for the actual, how we interface with the sending and receiving, but we'll get to all of that and we'll explain all of that. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's do first things first. We're on the website, it says download Ledger Live, so let's do that, okay? So we're gonna click download Ledger Live. I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna go ahead and say Mac. All right, so yeah, download it anywhere is fine. So we're gonna let that download. Okay, it's downloaded. So let's go ahead and open that up. All right, we'll drag it into applications. Cool, so now we should be able to just open up Ledger Live. You can go to your applications folder or you can just do the search bar hotkey. Okay, so let's go ahead and open it. All right, cool. So it's starting up here. Uh, again, nice and clean. Welcome to Ledger. Let's get started. Okay, you should definitely read these. I've read them before. All right, which one is ours? We have the Nano X. So uh, first time using it. If you have, uh, so this is a good thing to point out. If uh, in the future you decide to have another one as a backup, I actually have two, I have one as a backup. Um, if you decide to have one as a backup, this is where you would use it as a recovery phrase. Um, the reason why it's good is in case it gets lost or stolen. Yes, you have your recovery phrases that you could always grab another one and do it, but the nice thing about having a backup that's just ready to go is that you can immediately transfer your funds somewhere else. So if you were doing that, here's uh, how you would uh, go about that process. But let's say first time using Nano X, that'll be us. All right, we're gonna access our crypto. Uh, we're gonna have our own private keys. That's the whole reason why we're doing this, right? The, the whole saying, not your keys, not your coins, right? We don't want our stuff living on an exchange. We wanna have it ourselves on our wallet. We can stay offline. And then, yeah, so let's, let's do this thing. Okay. Cool, so uh, yeah, plan about 30 minutes and part of it is just be, gonna be, because of the, the pen and paper, um, these sheets that we had talked about, we're gonna need these in a second, okay? So uh, when you've got about 30 minutes and you're gonna be alone and there's nobody around that could possibly see what you're writing down, you're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so got it. Here we go, turn on the Nano, we have it on. Um, we're gonna connect it. And now uh, from here, we had some other instructions that popped up here that were saying we can go left and right. So we navigate with left and right, and then we can uh, push both buttons to confirm. So we're going to uh, turn the Nano on, browse, and we're going to go to set up as new device. I'm gonna hit confirm. It's now going to ask me to choose a pin of four to eight digits. So I'm gonna confirm that and I'm going to set my pin. Okay, now it's asking me to confirm my pin. So we kind of skipped ahead here. Um, follow instructions, I was following the instructions here, but if I hit next step for the pin code, it'll tell me here to choose my pin and make sure that it's secure and private. So I'm gonna set it up. I chose it on here and I confirmed it. All right, so now, this is the really important part. We're gonna get to the recovery phrase, okay? They even have you check this box. I understand that if I lose this, I cannot access it and nobody can help me get it back. This is super, super important, okay? We can do another video some other time on private keys and how they work and how they generated. But basically, even though you have your hardware wallet, your coins will not be living on here. They're living on the distributed network. But the whole purpose of having this hardware wallet is that the private keys used to sign transactions as you those keys live here and never leave here. Now, the way that those keys are generated, however, is they're generated 
directly from this 24 word passphrase that you're going to write down. The 24 word passphrase comes directly from this device. It's not from the internet. Nobody sends it to you. It is generated by this device and it's unique and you're going to write it down here. So the only time anyone ever sees this is you at this moment right now when you're creating it. So it is critical that when it goes through and gives you the 24 words, that you take the time to write them down on all three sheets of paper and that no one's around you that can be copying these words down. Okay? So I understand that if I lose this recovery phrase, I will not be able to access it in the future and I cannot get my crypto back. So recovery phrase, here we go. So take the recovery sheet. We're gonna write down all of these words, okay? And so here we go. It says on here, write down your recovery phrase. I'm gonna confirm that. Here we go, warning. These 24 words are the only backup that you have, so secure them carefully. Now, again, the nice thing about this is that if you do lose your ledger and you have these security phrases, remember we were talking about before about the whole backup process? You can then take your security phrase, get a new ledger, and with these 24 words, it will generate an identical private key to the one you had before. That again is both a great thing in case you lose it, but a terrible thing in case anybody gets access to these. Okay, I'm gonna say that one more time. Your private key is generated directly from the words on this paper, okay? If you lose your ledger, you can restore it by having these words, but if you lose these words, anybody can restore any ledger and act as if they are you and sign transactions as you and send your stuff away. So this is almost more important than the ledger itself. You need to make sure that you take care of not losing these sheets, okay? So now, uh, I'm gonna take the time here, I'm gonna go through, it's going to tell me my 24 words. I have them all here, but what I'm gonna do is, as it tells me here, I'm going to go one word at a time, okay? I'm gonna take my pen, and I'm gonna write down one word at a time, all 24 words onto this paper, okay? Okay, now that I've written down my 24 words, the next prompt that I get is to confirm my recovery phrase. Okay, so on the device it told me, confirm my recovery phrase. What it's going to do now is going to give me a series of words to choose from, and I need to select the correct word in order exactly for all 24 words, okay? So now you are repeating back to the device what those words are, selecting from a list, and you're gonna go through all of them, okay? So, uh, yeah, here we go. So you'll see a little animation here that'll show you. So we're gonna go through, select the right one, and then we'll confirm with both buttons when we do it and go through all 24. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I just confirmed my 24 words. Um, it looks like I got them all right first try. <laughs> And here we go, your device is ready, fantastic. So we repeated them all. Okay, hide a recovery phrase, give you some tips here on how you can hide it, and I'm done. So game on. Okay, so this is kind of fun. This didn't do this the first time I did it, but great, so a little, little quiz. Um, so question one, this is actually great. I'll, I'll let you guys answer at home. As a Ledger user, my crypto is stored. Is it on your Nano or is it on the blockchain? We, we just said this, and I wasn't uh, prepped for this, but we just said this. On the blockchain, exactly. Your Nano only holds your private keys for the signatures of the transactions that you're going to send and receive to the blockchain, but your cryptocurrency is stored on the blockchain. Cool, got one right. My recovery phrase is no longer secure or private. No, longer, uh, no problem, Ledger can send me a copy or my crypto is no longer safe and I need to transfer them to a secure place. Once again, uh, I did not know these questions were coming, uh, but uh, for those of you playing along at home, if you lose your recovery phrases, can Ledger send you another copy or should you consider all of your crypto that is on that wallet at risk? That's right, it's no longer safe and you need to send it to a secure place. Two in a row. Okay, last question. When I connect my Nano to the Ledger app, my private key, the private key itself that we use for signatures, is it still offline or briefly connected to the internet? What do you think? If you guess still offline, you're correct. Yep, so this is a great description here. The private key always remains offline in the hardware wallet. Even when connected to the Nano, the Ledger app cannot access the private key. And what, what we'll see in future videos is that you must physically authorize every transaction on your device. When you get a transaction and you're, and you're trying to send or even when you're trying to open the wallet, on a third party wallet, you need to actually like double click on here to do the confirmation to, uh, to say that you're authorizing it. So let's finish our quiz. Great work for everybody that got all three. 
Look at that, you're already a pro. So, so let's pause here and say, remember how we started, right? We started because we were anxious about this process. Uh, we didn't know if it's something that we're really comfortable doing, but, but so far so good, right? I mean, it, it's been pretty smooth um, from when we ordered it to when it mystically appeared here <laughs> immediately after, right? So going really well. And I think this is probably a good time for me to jump in and say, if you're enjoying the video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you plan on storing Cardano on your wallet, once you do, consider delegating to our Aspen stake pool, which we'll link below. All right, so you're a pro, let's move on. Let's make sure that it's a genuine Nano. Okay, so it says connect and unlock, right? A little screensaver turns on if you wait for too long. So now it's gonna ask me to answer my pin because it's been a bit. Okay, so it says my device is ready. So I'm gonna go to access dashboard. And I'm gonna confirm. Okay, so we should be good to go. Ah, so there we go. Okay, so uh, okay, so this is what I was talking about, how you're gonna have to do confirmation by double clicking any time that it asks you to actually uh, approve something. So we're going to let Ledger Live as a Ledger Manager start making changes to our hardware wallet. So we see here, just as they show there, allow Ledger Manager, so I'm gonna confirm that. Okay, we'll let it load up. And you get confetti. <laughs> okay, all good, we're all confirmed. Let's continue. Okay, so now, this part's a little bit confusing because it says add an account to get started. These accounts, you can think of them as like bank accounts, right? So these are your different accounts for your different cryptocurrencies. But before we can add accounts, we need to add the apps for those different accounts first, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is, see, actually down here, go to Manager to install apps, and once we have the apps, then we can add the accounts. So we'll go to Manager. And it also, we could have selected it here on the left. So we'll let this load up. Okay, cool. So now here are some commonly used apps that we can download, all right? So uh, for those of you that found us uh, through uh, all of our other Cardano videos, we'll go ahead and uh, treat you and start first with Cardano. So we'll go ahead and install Cardano, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. So let's get those installed. While that's going on and they're installing, we can see here on our actual device, our apps populating as well. You see it says processing as they install, and they'll be appearing on the screen. One more while that's going that I would recommend. Um, here we go. If I do, uh, is it called check? Recovery check, first guess. Okay, recovery check is one that I highly recommend. Um, once you've written down all of your passphrases, right? And I know that I've stressed so many times that your passphrases are so important. If you're anything like me, then you're probably a little bit anxious about, I hope I wrote them all right down in the right order. I know that I confirmed them, but I wanna be sure Recovery Check is a great way to do this. You can install it. And the way that this app is going to work, I'm not gonna go through it, but the way the app works is, on the device, you'll open it up, and it'll basically ask you on the device to re-enter all of your words in order. And then if you get them all right, it's gonna compare the generated private key with the one on the device, and if they match, it'll tell you, yep, your words were entered correctly. Okay, so let's clear this out. So right now we've got Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, and we know that we also have the other one for the check. And if I look at my screen, I see here that Cardano was the first one I installed. You can see the logo for Bitcoin, the logo for Ethereum. So we're all set, uh, almost done. Last thing that I wanna show you guys before we're done here is, let's go back to portfolio. Now we can add accounts. So we can add ourselves a Bitcoin account. We're gonna open the Bitcoin app and confirm. Okay, so it says the application is ready. It's waiting for, there we go, yeah, it's waiting for Ledger Live to do its thing. Okay, so there are two different kinds of addresses for Bitcoin. We'll do a different video on what those are and how they work. For now, just go ahead and add both. And that's it, we've added some Bitcoin accounts. Great, so we can see here now, our balance is zero, because we have nothing uh, on Bitcoin. Um, but we can also, so here are our two addresses for Bitcoin. Let's also add an Ethereum one. Okay, same idea. It's gonna ask me to open the Ethereum app on the device, so I'm gonna double click to confirm. It's gonna synchronize here. Okay, Ethereum only has one kind of address type, so we'll just do Ethereum, that's fine, and we'll hit done. All right, so here we are in our accounts. We see our two Bitcoin ones and our Ethereum one. We don't have accounts, remember, we don't have an account that we can set up for Cardano because Ledger Live 
can't manage the UI for us here. We're gonna need a third-party wallet. So what I've been alluding to this whole time, for Cardano, unfortunately, we cannot yet do it through Ledger Live. We're gonna to have to choose one of three of the most popular wallet options. And so you might be thinking like, oh, we're so close. I got everything set up. I have the Cardano application, but now I need another wallet, right? So again, um, your private keys will live here for all of your Cardano transactions. They will be signed through the physical device and you'll confirm them through the physical device, but the UI of how you actually interface with it is going to need to happen on a third party wallet, okay? That third party wallet, we actually have three options to choose from. And if you're wondering, three different wallets, a whole third party uh, series of options, what am I gonna do? Don't worry about it, we've got you covered. We have our next video covers exactly that what the difference between the wallets are, which one might be right for you, and how to get them set up so we can finally get your Cardano coins, get your ADA off of the exchange onto your wallet. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, turn on notifications, and if you appreciate the work that we do here, consider delegating to our Aspen stake pool once you get your ADA onto your wallet. Thanks a lot, we'll see you next time.